How are we looking? See something there? Yes, it looks good to me. It looks good. Awesome. Okay. Good morning, everybody. My name is Yvonne Johnson. I oversee the product development laboratory here at Cotton Incorporated headquarters, your headquarters in Cary, North Carolina. I want to talk to you about some cotton innovations that we've been working on for the this past year and even some prior years as well, and what we're going to be working on going forward. Now, let's see if this thing will advance. Okay, so the product development laboratory, and we're part of the product development and implementation division at Cotton Incorporated. And so our mission is really, it's to influence brands and retailers with fabric inspiration. We need to keep cotton ideas in front of the decision makers that choose the fibers that go into different products. Some of you have had the opportunity to come to Cary, North Carolina for some of the producer tours. I encourage you, if you haven't come, to please do come because it's a lot better to see this in person. Uh, in the product development laboratory, we have different weaving equipment. It's state of the art and knitting equipment. So we weave, we can do circular knitting and also knitwear. So a lot of different types of products. What we do in the product development department and utilizing this equipment is we develop fabric collections. These fabric collections are to go into clothing and also into home products. And we develop two collections, at least two a year. And here you'll just see a, a sampling of some of the fabrics that I'll be sharing with you during this presentation. And basically it's cotton fabric inspiration. We create toolkits. So think of it as a fabric marketing toolkit. We provide that to our global supply chain division, as well as our consumer marketing division for outreach and to influence the industry. When we think about the development work we're doing, it all starts with your fiber. The fiber from the field is the most amazing thing because it can be trans, it can be turned into a garment, turned into a fabric without any further processing if you didn't want to. So we start with the fiber, we go into the yarn, we develop the fabric, and the end use will be garments, or it can also be home products. Now, we aren't just kind of here creating pie in the sky, oh, I think this will be a great idea. We really hone in on what's happening in the marketplace. So I think you've heard presentations by John Devine, and um, there's an allocation of how fibers are utilized in the industry. So for if we think about all fibers, um, in not just cotton, but all fibers, the amount of uh, uh, goes into apparel is 75% and home is 20%. Now, if we look on the right, if we break that down, the apparel side, because again, it's 75%, knit tops are 30% of that and non-denim bottoms, if you think about chinos, um, shorts, things like that are 20%. And then when we go around here to the left, there's a smaller percentage. You know, you look at jeans and we think jeans is ubiquitous. I mean, of course, most of the cotton goes into jeans, but if we're looking at where we can have the most influence, we're gonna be really looking at these knit tops and non-denim bottoms, because think about it. How many t-shirts or polo shirts do you have and then to go with one pair of pants. And so we really think about our development work that way. And so here are the products that uh, we really focus on. We work t-shirt fabrics, polo shirt fabrics, knits, sweatshirts, hoodies, socks, sweaters, button down shirts, chinos on the top right, and of course, denim. And what you see in the middle is the type of fabric constructions that we work with. Uh, knits on the left, making interlooping uh, stitches, which is very stretchy. That's why you see them in the knit tops. And then on the right, wovens, very stable, very durable constructions. Now, I know that you guys love this slide and I really pray that none of you actually ever had one of these outfits, but in the 1930s, polyester was invented. In the 1970s, there was a big push, like these photographs you see here that are really terrible, but this is a double knit leisure suit. And this caused a really big problem for the cotton industry. And hence, that's how our uh, research and development program was created to really come together to promote cotton above polyester. 
So when we think about this polyester or other fibers, there's polyester, there's nylon, there's rayon, all kinds of different synthetic and reconstituted fibers. They're produced in a factory. So here's our beautiful cotton on the top left. On the bottom left, that is a spinneret. It almost looks like you're making spaghetti, but that is producing polyester filaments. You can see they're all the same. They're all coming out of these tiny little holes. The top here in the middle, that is the cross section of your cotton fiber. You can see it looks like kidney shape. They're all kind of different shapes and sizes. And then here on the bottom middle, that is the polyester filament in a cross section. So you can see they're all the same. They're all the same length. They're all the same diameter. And then up top here is a cotton yarn and on the bottom polyester multifilament. So there are characteristics of the polyester that lighter weight, they, they don't absorb any moisture. And so this is our competition and how we have to show cotton and all the things that it naturally does and also enhance it in different ways through textile development, in finishing research, in yarn formation. In our division, it's not just the department that I oversee, which is product development. We also have a fiber processing team that really looks at the fiber, creates yarns. We also have a dyeing and finishing department where we take the fabrics that we develop and then we put color on them or very interesting finishes that make us competitive with uh, synthetics. And there's changing market demands. I mean, every if you look at the market, they're looking for lighter weights, uh, breathability, faster drying, sun protection, uh, stretch, insulation, wicking moisture, a lot of different things that cotton, you know, we need cotton to be. And we work on that. So when we are developing our fabric collections, we talk with our marketing team, we do research, we're always scouring through journals. We just got back from a major textile machinery trade show that was held only every four years. This trade show is any piece of equipment you could imagine. It took up 34 football fields. So really staying abreast of what's going on with textile technology is very important. When we develop the fabrics, we're really looking at performance through construction, technologies and blends. For instance, polyester is, you really see a lot of polyester in polo shirts. And it's because it's really kind of um, shiny. I'm not sure why people really like that, but you see a lot of people wearing them. But we developed 100% cotton knits that have just more of a smooth effect. They have a lot of sheen. They are not gonna wrinkle. And we developed these 100% cotton knits to compete with synthetics. So we're showing these ideas to the industry and we're influencing them to consider cotton, performance cotton, to go into these polyester products. Also, just looking at, as I mentioned, knits, so um, kind of a high amount of product that's out there. So we really do develop a lot of knit fabrics in our lab. And here we are developing outerwear fabrics. So looking um, kind of outside the envelope where typically if you think of a hoodie or a fleece, um, sweatshirt would be kind of the, the kind of the loopy fuzzy type of inside garment but what we've done here is create different types of fabrics that have insulation do the construction here you see these corrugated effects and also very interesting visual effects that just really entice the brands and retailers to want to use these cotton products also, when we develop fabrics, we want them to be versatile and functional. For instance, here, this fabric was developed. It can go into women's wear. It can also go into men's shorts. I'm sure some of you have heard, of, most of you know what a seersucker is. It's usually like a pink and white or a blue and white stripe. Well, in this case, we developed a jacquard construction where less of the fabric is touching the skin. So you have more airflow. So it'll be cooler for summer weather and humid environments. Cotton's natural story is a very effective marketing approach for cotton. We have really honed in on and focused on the natural story of cotton because really it's one of the only fibers that can be taken from the field, trans made into a yarn, made into a fabric without anything else done to it. So this is the natural beauty of cotton. 
We've woven it and knit it into different, very interesting fabrics, a non-denim bottom weight, a really interesting jacket or bed fabric, and on the bottom, a hoodie or jacket fabric. But it's also eco-friendly because we work very closely with our textile chemistry research team to do different types of finishes and um, cleaning up the cotton without using harsh chemicals. So we're really ahead of the game in terms of just showing very eco-friendly, sustainable processes. And really cotton's the only one that can do that. Synthetics are a big problem. If you've been looking in any articles or anything like that, you'll see the problem with microplastics, microfibers. You probably heard Barry say this in some meetings, it's like, which is very frightening. But apparently we consume a credit card's worth of plastic every week. That is disturbing. So we're really developing fabrics that are alternatives to synthetic fleece. And this is a great, when we're looking at a natural fiber blend, combining cotton and wool, two natural fibers that are biodegradable, when you're in the United States, any garment that has a raised surface has to pass flammability. And so these fabrics with this small amount of wool, it's only 20%, they are class one, meaning they pass flammability. So they're biodegradable, they have no synthetic in them. And um, so they're awesome opportunities to get out there in the marketplace in place of polyester. We also develop inspiration for cotton sweaters, just really interesting designs and visual appeal. Um, it, on the left-hand side, this kind of, this, embroidery, open work effect. It also used a very interesting eco-friendly dye effect. On the top right, this very nice 100% cotton intarsia technique. And then a transparent, it's kind of a technical look combined with a rustic look at the same time. And even taking knitwear, and knitwear is done on a different type of machine. And again, if you come here, we'd be happy to show you exactly how it works, but taking cotton knit sweaters and putting them into active wear in athleisure. So really, you know, showing how these 100% cotton fabrics can go into other products like this zip up uh, jacket that you wouldn't see otherwise. And just interestingly, this jacket and any of the garments I'm showing you, they are not physical garments. These were made in 3D, computer generated apparel software. So the whole point is to be able to come up with ideas, show garments without ever having to waste fabric to make physical garments. As I mentioned at the very beginning, polyester is a big problem for us. It's probably our number one um, fiber that we have to compete with. And the th issue is that it can be lighter weight just because uh, it's plastic and it doesn't absorb any water again because it's made out of plastic. So we develop, sometimes it's very difficult to develop 100% cotton knit to compete with the synthetic just because of the weight. Cotton weighs more, cotton absorbs more moisture. That's why it's so popular, especially in home products like towels. But here we've done competitive cotton fiber blends. So we've combined cotton, it's at least 60%. We try to keep it at least 60% and then combined it with some other uh, fibers like as you see on the bottom, we did polyester, we've done natural fibers like wool, nylon, rayon, acetate, spandex for stretch. But the whole idea here is you've got the comfort of cotton on the inside, it's very, very soft. And on the outside, you might have this other fiber that gives it more of a technical, kind of a techie look. And then also it's just going to be um, breathable because of the cotton. And typically it's gonna dry faster as well, absorb less um, moisture. Also, we've developed at Cotton Incorporated performance finish technologies. One, three of them that I have here on this slide are pure press technology, storm cotton technology, and tough cotton technology. And so again, it's putting technology on 100% cotton that really elevates it to be more durable and last longer and also to be easier care. So pure press technology on the left is an easy care finish that is on wovens and it is out there in the marketplace. In the middle, storm cotton technology makes your hoodie and sweatshirt water repellent, which is fantastic for 100% uh, cotton product. And then on the right for increased durability, tough cotton technology increases the abrasion resistance of a knit fabric or a woven fabric. And then continuing with performance. Now we get a lot of um, 
with with synthetics they're mostly synthetic that you see in your fishing shirts that you see a lot of hiking wear so we've really focused on that with our woven development by working on constructions that are breathable and then also incorporating our cotton incorporated finishes on them to make them more competitive so here you have three fabrics they're they're all 100 percent cotton and they have little holes that were built into the construction they're permanent openings that cause ventilation ventilation so there's more airflow then also we put the storm cotton technology on the fabric so now it does not absorb as much moisture so excellent for outdoor hiking activities and fishing and then also stretch again we're really trying to show ideas as much as possible that are really viable in 100 cotton and typically if you're going to have a stretch garment, it's going to have spandex in it. Maybe you've heard the word lycra. And so what we developed here, and this is something that was developed at Cotton Incorporated probably 20 years ago. Some folks on this call had a lot to do with this. And this is comfort stretch in 100% cotton. So it's the way that the fabrics were woven and then the way that they were finished puts in about 10% and even higher amount of comfort stretch, all in 100% cotton and biodegradable. And then incorporating, do you see the little droplets on the left, the storm cotton technology, we have a dual technology that's really functional for active activities and also workplace to stay more comfortable. And also, so I said 75% of all fiber goes into apparel. So we really do have to really focus on that, develop a lot of fabrics, show these ideas. But denim and home are also very important because they are just traditionally cotton product. And the companies that produce synthetic, they're trying to get their product into everything. So you might see something out there called bamboo sheets. Well, first of all, it's not bamboo. It's not bamboo that was cut down and turned into a sheet. It's dissolved and then it's turned into a man-made filament or it's a kind of like a synthetic. So with cotton, we really want to continue to show ideas with cotton for denim and home. And we want to do the best processing because there's more demand out there in the industry for sustainable, low impact processes to reduce water, energy, and chemicals. In terms of denim, what we've worked on is using alternatives to say bleaches, chlorine bleach is used a lot, permanganate, potassium permanganate is usually used to bleach out the indigo from a, um, a garment. On the left-hand side, this plaid design, that was actually done with a laser, laser technology. So the laser burned off the surface of the indigo, burning off some of the indigo to create this design. So no water was used and no chemicals were used. On the top right, denim with natural stretch. Again, no synthetics, but you've got that nice comfort stretch. And then longer lasting here on the bottom right with tough cotton denim. So it's gonna have seven times more abrasion resistance than your typical denim. Denim's already durable. So this takes it up to another level. And then home inspiration. Again, we're looking at eco-friendly processes, also just showing very unique designs, interesting yarns, interesting weave and knit structures that can go into duvet covers, into blankets, into throws. On the top left is a naturally colored um, textural flat knit. On the bottom left, this is a quilted flat knit with denim yarns in it. We have natural cotton as well as this denim yarns in a quilted construction. So very insulative. On the top right, it's an upholstery fabric that is a jacquard with a gray heather and also natural cotton. And on the bottom right, this novelty effect, we use a lot of different novelty yarns and to get this really pretty melange heather effect. And then also with towels, with upholstery, with uh, curtains, where we've developed again, just different surface effects, like what you see here on the left, it's called, it's a surface embellished voile, a very lightweight woven. That's got a very interesting design. It's a flocking technique. So it's almost this little fuzzy circle. And on the top right, textural jacquard towel fabrics, this fancy jacquard flat woven. And on the bottom right, even using natural dyes to dye the towel instead of synthetic dyes. Also technology, making your sheets last longer, that speaks to sustainability and durability in 100% cotton. And here, this is a tough cotton technology that was put on sheets, making the sheet last seven times more abrasion resistant 
than a normal sheet. And it stays just as breathable and soft as a standard sheet. But besides apparel and home product, we want to look for new markets for cotton to extend cotton's use, to show how cotton can be used in other markets, other end uses. And here, using uh, knitting techniques where we've done technical knits um, in the two black fabrics that you see here, very textural, that we're looking at these to go into other products like backpacks, handbags. And we're even working on knitted cotton shoes where we're using 100% cotton in shoe uppers. Some of these fabrics and de these designs and ideas, they're very kind of cutting edge. It's gonna probably take a while before they make it to the marketplace, but we have to keep on innovating and developing to show all the things that cotton can do. That's all I have to share with you today. So there's a lot more. And again, welcome you to come here to Cary to see the place for yourself.